Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to the start of a new video in which we're playing as Henry M. Jackson in TNO, of course. Uh, but he's been inaugurated as President of the United States. To Henry Henry Scoop Jackson swore the oath of office and was inaugurated as President of the United States of America. Given a hopeful but somewhat fire speech in front of thousands of onlookers at the National Mall, the new president calls for an end of extremism and continued American protection of liberty. The address has been praised in the OFM, but less so in Germany and at least, all, at least of all in Japan. It's also poorly received by the more extreme elements of the MPP, most notably the Marxists and the Sovereigns. Regards, appears America will not embrace extremism for the sake of survival as a new progressive president steps up. If you expect Jackson to truly act upon his threats towards the Germans and Japanese, most even believe that his administration will prove just to be another four years of American posturing. Only time will tell. It's time to put Japan back in her place. But, uh... I played this before. He was a previous 1972 candidate, presidential candidate, or president as well before. But um, that being said, I'm not sure if anything's really changed. So that's why we're doing it now. Uh, America Rising, friends of America, uh, our friends and Americans. I stand before you today not only as president of the United States, but as a symbol of what it stands for. I've always believed that America is and forever shall be the home of the democracy, not a hotbed of extremism nor hatred. Now, now I see my belief is correct. Today we celebrate not the victory of a single party ideology. But our freedoms as Americans, and freedoms yet to come. For I have sworn both before God and the nation I do so dearly love. The same oath our forebears have taken for centuries now, however. In the year of our Lord, 1972, the world is not as it was those two centuries ago, early 1973. Evil powers have grown across the world, and America stands as the only power not to fall in the inexorable march of hatred. I say unto you, America, that we start, well, continue to stand. We'll continue to fight for liberty as the forefathers did for so long ago. We shall not forget that we're the heirs of the revolution. Heirs of freedom's torch bearers. Let the world know that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans, ones born in the century, tampered by victory, and disciplined through defeat. This generation was proud of its heritage and is with its predecessor, will continually prove unwilling to allow human rights and civil liberties, to which our nation's always been committed to be taken away from the peoples of the world. Let all foreign and otherwise know that America supported allies, to aid the downtrodden, and struck at the evil, all in the defense of liberty. I and all America pledge this as we talk about the Jackson presidency. Henry M. Scoop Jackson, a native Washingtonian who has been denied service to his country during the 40s by the dreadful Democrats, has managed to claw his way to the West Wing of the White House. Representing the shining ambition of the Central Branch of the National Progressive Pact and his desire to reform America into a new, progressive, and powerful state in the entrance of a new decade. To describe President Jackson's ambitions and his desires for the new administration will take quite a while to detail the intricacies of the politician's mind, so he's taking the liberty to summarize it briefly for all to hear. Bombs and welfare, yes, it may seem to take mine, time and money to get there, but America will soon be rid of the extremists who pull and tear the stems and seams of the Constitution. And be able to walk forward with the power of the military at her fingertips and a well-off American pipe standing there to support her in all she does. Here's the next four years, everybody. A Union of Steel. I apologize for this one. Oh, God. Uh, nope. And a message from Kennedy to his successor. Miss Jackson. <clears throat> Congratulations on your election to the presidency. It was a difficult campaign, but you prevailed. I understand there have been tensions between us since uh, the events of 64 when I received the coalition's nomination. In your place, please understand that it was never my intention to harm you or the party which you represent. So I've been deeply, I've always been deeply grateful for your advice and support and over these past few years aside, I've always counted on you as a close friend and ally. You will find yourself desperate for both of these when you enter the White House, as I did, though there's no shortage of individuals. Happy to ride your coattails, coattails and support you when times are good. True loyalty is hard to come by. Many of the people you know will ignore or abandon you when times are tough. There will be hard days when you need to go out it alone against a world that seems determined to be cruel. Whenever it seemed like I could not go on, I would turn to my wife, Ethel, or to my brothers, like Jack and Ted. I knew that no matter how rough the world was, I could not let them down. I had to persevere. I hope you can find the same source of strength for the difficult road ahead. Please send Helen my regards. Yours, Robert F. Kennedy. Give in to an assistant with a weary sigh. The MPP has relied upon its national branch since the beginning. In terms of national defense and foreign policy, our faction overlaps with theirs significantly, but... The faction isn't always reliable at times or outright to oppose our policy initiatives. But our administration's influence on Capitol Hill could help change this. Our congressional liaisons will lean on their leadership, or on leadership, getting them to move troublesome national con Congress people off of important committees, snubbing them at caucus meetings, and using a dozen other tactics to cut out the national's influence from the halls of power. Co cost of overall MPP support. So be it. The seeds have sprouted scoop. Frost, Frost crawled its way across the windows of the Oval Office as President Scoop, Henry Scoop Jackson looked out upon Washington, D.C., bearing a warm cup of coffee setting a, sat upon a beautifully carved and ancient desk. Surprisingly? Surprising? No. For J President Jackson had known the chill of Frost since his birth as a Washingtonian along the west coast of the U.S. Enlightening, of course, as Jackson dwelled upon the resources or sources of belief and ideas that had spawned throughout his life from both his birth to the swearing upon his Bible. Sure, when you look at America today, you can see all the scars of pushing and pulling from partisan politics, of course, but beneath all of that, it was a poor African American who drove past through the city of Everett, who constantly shared from Frost by any of their name, just as frigid. It was the veterans and soldiers who shook hands with, talking about the stories of desperation and the fight for the country they endured as they fought through the Second World War in the Pacific and in England, or for the younger ones, the plains and savannas of Africa. Hope was what inspired him as he knew it was possible for this amazing country to be helped, 
even more. No matter how many soldiers or dollars it took, dollars were what fed the clothed or hungry, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, and shelter the homeless. While soldiers were what stood at the wall for America on the front lines and made sure the fascists out there didn't take one more gosh darn step forward. A car's lights passed by the what mornings do shook the president's back to reality as his hands grasped his mug of coffee, bringing it to his lips. America needed help, to be sure, but his core was golden, and it's time for him to take a stand and ask what he could do for his country. After all, he knew he was the man to do it. Red, white, and blue, as they always should be. As we go meet the Chiefs. President Jackson was elected, in no small part because of his pledge to support the U.S. military through thick and thin. After all, in the Senate, it was a strong hawk whose military budget requests were large, va legendarily vast. The Joint Chiefs of Staff were surely the experts on what the branches of the military needed to thrive in this new decade. Our administration will meet with them and work to improve the U.S. military through any and all means. Turn on the hose. We live in the age of technological, technological marvels and strategic opportunity. Everything from satellites to computers to laser guided munitions will allow our military to achieve incredible things in the field of battle, but to have more modern, professional, capable military, we'll need to invest. Officers and specialists will have to be trained, new weapon systems will have to be procured, and all of this will quite, cost quite a bit of money. Fortunately, we're elected with a mandate to expand defense funding. The Pentagon will have all the money could ask for to build the fighting force of the future. A hot seat in a hotter world. You know, I'm trying to cut costs out around here for the sake of the country, so I scaled back the president chef of President chef team for some Dunkin' Donuts instead. I hope that works. Besides, what we crap they brought me sucked. President Jackson said, earning a stream of chuckles and laughs from the members of the State Department and Department of Defense. The men and women in the room began to laugh as they finished their early morning breakfast, shaking hands with the president now. Now, let's get to starting this meeting. And I'm sure you all are all aware that National Brigham's back gets elections for promises of change and promising for a better, stronger America. Since it needs to be more, now more than ever, with the Japanese and Germans nipping at our heels, so we gotta show them what we stand for. Everything that gets done in this room, every decision made, every hand shook, every thought that passes through our mind, it all has to go back one principle. Evil must and will be met with force. There's no room for a detente when the people we have to work with have butchered and beheaded the fathers and grandfathers of the families of Americans out there, and there's no way in heck that I could respect myself for shaking hands with a Nazi or an Imperial. It goes for all of you, too, by the way. Church, you're leading the Department of State, and I want you to make sure that every diplomat, ambassador, and embassy out there knows that we're not going to be the kid. who will get shoved around in the world anymore. Admiral Burke, you're in charge of the Department of Defense. The rest are sure those brave sons of America out there aren't going to be forgotten about. We're not going to leave a single soldier, sailor, airman, or marine uncared for. In exchange, we're going to be making sure that they hoist the stars and stripes wherever we can. We're not taking one step back, ladies and gentlemen, not at all. With a few handshakes and nods, everyone went off to work. Jackson knew in his heart that America wasn't going to be backing down for the next four years. It's not just our job, it's our duty and why we fight. After all the blood and treasure lost in the wars of the 1960s, America and the world needs to know that we have a military. The U.S. armed forces represent the best of us, standing for freedom and justice in a world so often left wanting for. While the Pentagon start providing assistance to all sorts of movie and television studios while simultaneously expanding our director of public relations strategy, America's military might will be known throughout the world in a new way in the 70s, and if war comes to America, our people will know why we fight. Get increased support from those states they bound to the military? Probably like a lot of southern states. Two snakes. Oh. Well, we'll for the people first. Welfare has always been a tricky spot in terms of legislation for the U.S., as some of the harshest critics on the right would proclaim that such actions would spur an economic meltdown while making our citizens lazy. But one thing is for sure, all of all people, they want to feel happy and cared for by the government, and by God, we'll make it happen. Cross country. The poor and hungry continue to scrounge for what they can, scrambling the bit to make ends meet and eating the scraps that have been left for them. This cannot do, we will not do for the America. We the people, for the people. Sure, the economy has always been a delicate balancing act since the end of the Second World War, but we've grown plenty since those days, and it's our intention to prioritize for the lower classes of our country over the banks and stock market. And I apologize for reading quickly, I'm just a little full. I'm just having my cup of tea here as well. Not bad, not bad. 76 billion, not bad. Lunch. Every Friday, the cafeteria that smiths out his graphic image studios just busting with activity. Dozens of young creatives enjoy the brief period of recreational time and eagerly yearn for the long-awaited weekend. The food's good, too. Today, a selection of sandwiches coupled with the complimentary salads got served. At one table, Drew White sat down with his colleague Ed Edward Andrews and enjoyed his well-deserved lunch break. Turning to Edward, he attempted to instigate some small talk. I've got to say, this egg sandwich is pretty darn tasty, anyways. How's progress on these new posters? I've heard that you apparently had some really fantastic ideas for them. Edward could muster nothing but a tired shrug. For a moment, it seemed like he would say nothing at all, but then the words just started to pour out of him like water from an overpressurized hose. Oh, I'm almost done with them. It's just the same thing over and over, you know. The Japanese occupant spreads its tentacles all over the Pacific as a classic motive. The new scary skull wearing one of those Nazi hats. Lately, I even combined those two to create a Nazi skull with the tentacles coming out of its holes. It's pretty cliché at this point, but it gets the people going, I guess. He paused for a few seconds, lowering his voice to a bare audible mutter and continued. This whole project is just so utterly depressive. When I went to college and got my degree in graphic design, I wanted to be a visionary. I want to design some groundbreaking masterpieces that make people reassess how they view life itself now. I'm reduced to some kind of factory monkey pumping out the same three motives. To whip the masses into a warmongering frenzy. I'm nothing but a discount gutterball design, and I utterly despise myself for it. Silence. Drew has never been good at comforting people attempting to defuse the situation. Well, I understand your problems, buddy. Try eating one of those egg sandwiches. Maybe they'll make you feel better. Maybe it will. Well, maybe it will. 
All right, not a privilege. Oftentimes, American conservatives will speak about social welfare programs as if there's something to be earned. Our administration vehemently agrees with this notion that American people deserve a safety net that can all can benefit from. And our administration will work to sell that idea through speeches, campaigns, uh, grassroots organizing. In our America, everyone should be able to reach the potential free from fear or deprivation or precarity. Frankfurt awaits. You don't think they're going to do us out there like this, sir? I'll be frank. I'm from this area. Southerners can catch a whip of fire when it comes to talk of welfare and social programs, sir. Vice President McMath said, as he sat next to the President McMath, I want you to know something. I want you to do my darnest. I want to do my darnest to fight out there and knock the heck out of the dudes who stood up against this country. And now you got that chance, so trust me when I say this now, more than ever, we got to fight, General. Now, presenting the man himself, President Jackson, on the future of helping Americans in his presidency, the governor of Kentucky said before shaking hands with the president as the crowd came to a roar. Good evening, everyone, and I thank you for welcoming me to the beautiful countryside of Kentucky. Now, I want you all to know something and recognizing the greatness of your state and all of Kentuckians within. Your state model comes to mind, united we stand, and divided we fall now. There are a power of the statement caused some of the some of the fights this country's been having within itself, however. I swear upon here and now that this country's as great as it ever has been, and even if it may need your help. That's why I call upon the bluegrass states help moving forward and helping me thank those who've already drawn, fallen down on their luck of the country, so that everyone's ready to be able to bring a new, about a newer, brighter day for the United States of America. I understand some of raised criticisms and concerns for the cost and whatnot, but what mark me, Kentucky? It's our duty, both civil and moral, to stand shoulder to shoulder with your fellow Americans. The only way we can guarantee this is by helping those who lay suffering, no matter the cost. The rest of the night was consumed by the mix of glamour and promises, as far as Vice President McMath was concerned. Sure. He looked into the audience and found his fair share of frowns and scowls. Nevertheless, he smiled, knowing darn well the applause that surrounded those fools. Together for America. And contacts in the Union. America's progressive unions have always been an integral part of a political coalition. The members vote for us, their executives donate to us, and their endorsements have helped their candidates in hundreds of races across the country. We'll need the support again of our genesis to succeed. Let's have our liaisons reach out to the leadership of unions like the UAW to keep advancing our administration's priorities and keep our union support strong. Two snakes. While much of the MPP is made up of national progressive factions, there are those at the both ends of the party who go far beyond the mainstream. There are the Nazi sympathizing sovereigns and the outright socialist and communist Marxist caucus. We need to shut them out before out of the party and make it clear that this sort of destructive extremism has no place in American government. God help us if they ever get the reins of power, of course. An army modernization program. The United States Army, Navy, and Air Force, and Marine Corps all stand as building blocks for related liberty sword and shield against the German Eagle to the east and the rise and sun's grasp across the Pacific. For years, they recovered proudly and strongly from the singing and defeat of the Second World War, and as, which has helped uh, promise us a future freedom, liberty, and justice for all. But it's undeniable that the sword can be sharpened and the shield can be bolstered. Thus, it's time to introduce a bill to Congress that will handle two of America's biggest issues education and military quality, the Army Modernization Program. With the program in effect, a better education standards will be coupled with improved and intensified training pro methods for members of the United States Army and may soon be expanded to include all branches of the military. With hope, we'll be able to expand the boosts, boosts in education towards all of the, uh, of the American public for the sake of a better tomorrow. After all, smart people make better soldiers, right? Voting in the program shall commence. Oh boy, we have one day left. Well, we have 50 progressive senators, so <laughs> whatever. And my friends, friends help each other out. Augie Hoggard. Audie Hogger looked out in the field, with the sun rolling down as a beautiful red shade dawn upon the sky, with the day coming to a close above the lush green fields of Quantico, Virginia. They say the program's going to help out all the active and reserve members of the military and help out veterans as well. They even say it's going to be helping kids. I mean, crap, what a way to kick off the end of the senior year, you know? Audie had a few other friends there, Jody Swain, Cliff Haynes, Ray Norris, everyone perked up at Audie's words except for Roy. Yeah, they're all going to enjoy their lives in college. I get it. Guess who's going to get work all of next year? Roy said, lighting a cigarette while laughing. Hey, lay off, Roy. Those things are just looking up for us. Things are looking up for us, is all, Cliff said. Of course you'd say that, you little hopeful crapper. Not everyone's lives are as perfect as a shiny pupil, boot looking military brats you all are. Roy said, squinting at Cliff. Audie looked back, seeing Jody's face meet the ground, his memories of her crying to him about her father being caught up in an artillery strike near Blum Fun Time. And the horror he saw as he saw her dad resting in the hospital talking to Jody, missing an arm and half of his face charred. Audie knew that Roy had it tough at home sometimes and all that of them had suffered, but Audie realized he had decided to make a choice. And at the moment, he didn't care. Audie's frisk cracked against Roy's nose, splitting, sending a splatter of blood and dropping Roy to the ground. What the crap is wrong with you? God, you're all crazy, he said, clutching his nose while flicking the cigarette at Audie's before he stormed off. A sting, a sting of regret pinched Audie's heart in the moment. But when he turned and saw Jody cleaning off that tear going down her face and Cliff giving him a slight smirk, Audie had an entirely different thought altogether. Come on, y'all, let's get some, let's get some milkshakes. Come comes through the advanced methods. Nice. Wow. Subsidized higher. The public higher. And that's in. Wow. That's a really fast version for... Uh, Skip Jackson. Um, 20 billion is not bad. 72 billion, yeah. I don't know. This, a lot of this was, I think, a lot of the same as I did before. It's just some maybe slightly different stuff, especially with the whole like, economy system here that we have. I hope you enjoyed looking at Henry M. Scoop Jackson. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.